first quarter of FY17 saw frenzied activity in the deal space with landmark deals like the Vodafone Idea merger stealing the limelight. Uh, to talk about what has been driving deal activity to determine the trends in the sector and to get a sense of what lies ahead, I'm now joined by Prashant Mehra, partner at Grand Thornton. Uh, Prashant, like always, thank you so much for joining us uh, and giving us time on this show. Uh, so the Vodafone merger uh, with Idea was obviously the big story uh, in that uh, space. Uh, so consolidation seemed to be the big theme in the first quarter of FY17. Do you expect that theme to continue going forward? Uh, yes, of course. Um, you know, as you rightly mentioned, uh, the Vodafone Idea merger, which is valued at about 27 billion dollars or so, uh, was a chunk of the 34 billion activity which we saw in the quarter. Uh, we've been mentioning this over the last previous quarters that consolidation will really drive the deal activity in the country for 2017 and possibly going forward as well. Uh, this is a, a, a huge transaction, uh, probably a milestone transaction in the telecom space. And I think we'll see, uh, continue to see uh, such transactions in other key sectors as well, which are core uh, specifically uh, the technology sector, which is e-com. I think we we're already talking about some large transaction playing there. Uh, more so in the pharma sector as well, we'll see consolidation uh, in uh, the otherwise the telecom sector, the infrastructure sector. But specifically on you know the financial sector uh, post demonetization, we're seeing some emerging business trends. Uh, NBFCs uh, are continuing their drive on fundraising uh, and microfinance uh, firms uh, are also uh, on a consolidation drive. So, so I think yes, the theme is here to stay and will perhaps continue for the, uh, for the remaining part of the year at least. Right, Prashant. Now, in your report, uh, uh, you mentioned that uh, big-ticket investment in the private equity space is at the lowest in 11 months. Uh, uh, what do you uh, think is driving investment lower? Uh, well, it's a little strange, you know, because the macroeconomic factors are all positive. Uh, I think the real reason why there's been tepid growth in the private equity space, which is just about $2 billion uh, uh, in this quarter, which is 30% below what it was in the same period last year. And I think what's really driving this is the is private equities being cautious in their pet space, which is, which is e-commerce. Uh, but, you know, interestingly, where there are uh, big uh, private equity and VC players uh, not making investments, we're seeing an emerging trend where early stage uh, uh, private equities, uh, VCs, as well as seed stage investors increasing their volumes on backing startups. Uh, and, and the volumes have been much higher than what they have been in the previous quarter. So, so interesting dynamics there. Uh, uh, but I think, you know, going forward, companies which are uh, uh, hoping to raise big monies from large venture capital and private equity firms will perhaps struggle for a few quarters still. Right, Prashant. Now, uh, now the big landmark event uh, coming up, the stipulated date is the 1st of uh, July for the GST rollout. Uh, what kind of impact do you see of the GST on uh, deal activity going forward? <coughs> I think, uh, uh, you know, we've been really waiting for GST to come. It's finally been announced and hopefully we will have a rollout from 1st of July. It's a much awaited, a milestone event. I think on all aspects of deal making, whether it is uh, foreign investment into India, whether it is domestic consolidation or whether it is private equity investments, it affects the manufacturing as well as the services sector. So I think we will see some really interesting times in deal activity picking up uh, in or around or even post the uh, GST rollout. Uh, it's going to make some significant uh, changes in the business models uh, which are being floated by various sectors. Uh, and uh, of course, it, it brings about uniform taxation. I think the visibility for growth, the planning for growth will be better with GST, uh, which uh, is a key factor for investments and deal making. Right, any, any particular sectors in your mind that might benefit more uh, once GST is rolled out? Uh, the manufacturing sector, obviously. Uh, I think there are, there are a lot of uh, intermediary taxes which make the goods more expensive in the hands of the consumer. So, so I think there is a, there are elements of services there. There are elements of uh, manufacturing there as well. So I think goods in general, the manufacturing industries perhaps to benefit the most. I'm not too sure if it will make a, such a big impact for services, but anything to do with manufacturing will definitely benefit from GST.